Yesterday, I was speaking to a group of students at the Institute of Technology in Oxford. Chris Evans is about to fly to America to deliver a series of lectures. He likes talking, finding that questions at the end of the lecture often throw up interesting points he might otherwise miss. Because I began to write originally from an inability to communicate, I feel rather differently about lecturing. But as one grows older and becomes less sensitive about what other people are thinking, many tasks become easier. The group I spoke to yesterday was a class in publishing, which is run by Peter Guy. He and his wife came to inspect Jasmine, our last home, when we were selling and moving to Heath House. We had lunch together before my talk, and discovered we had quite a few mutual friends in London, including Elwyn Blacker, who is brother-in-law of two of Margaret's and my closest friends. This was particularly interesting, since I still had running strongly in me the idea of the tide of associations which prompted me to launch myself into this book. Rashly, in my enthusiasm, I outlined to Peter what I was doing. A writer is well advised to keep mum about whatever he is currently working on. Don't let anyone know a thing, except maybe his wife, or else the bloom is apt to go off the plum, or the flower wither on the stem, or whatever horticultural image of doom occurs to you. Also, I believe, trumpeting abroad insensibly turns the mind towards the idea of publicity in general, and thus one's energies are deflected from the quarry. All of us in these corrupt days must hope, I suppose, to open our Sunday Times or Observer and discover to our horror a paragraph in one of those nasty briefing or whisper columns which begins, The extreme aplomb which has marked almost every paragraph of the work of eager young balding twenty-three-year-old John Malpractice is still almost as much in evidence as his original shirtwear. Only yesterday he sat down to write a new and entirely unplanned novel, autobiographical in intent, etc. Safe inside my original shirt wear, I talked to the publishing group yesterday for an hour, discussing one author's relations with his publisher. A curious question came up at the end. There was a girl in the front row with a lovely plantagenet face, I heard her name was Elizabeth, who asked, what about Hutchinson's? The subterranean tide of associations was flowing again. I had not mentioned Hutchinson's until that point. Elizabeth then said, Aren't they going to publish a novel of yours? They are. In July. They are going to publish the first volume of a quartet of novels entitled The Hand-Reared Boy, an outspoken novel which fourteen other publishers had rejected. How had Elizabeth heard of it already?' 